of the people in this district, those children, 60% of children in this district, are raised by somebody other than their biological parents. 60%. And who's picking up those tabs? Typically either the parents, to some extent, but usually some program coming from the government. So when I hear the ad for the, the, for the, the tax, we've got to have the safety net. Why do we have that net? Because it, when you have a net, people are going to jump in the net. But from phone, to welfare, to housing, to medical care, to education, it just goes on and on. All these things that were because I, as a citizen, made a decision and was not willing to accept the consequences of my decision. And we need to look at law. Not only is it constitutional, not only does federal law have to have a clause or some very straight tie that this is one of the enumerated powers that a federal law can have, but what is its effect on my personal responsibility, as Paul just said? You know, there's a plan. And, and I've been saying, if you've been following me, I've been saying it all over. Who's going to think this is going to get better in two years, the situation? How about four? How about six? It might stabilize. But here's your plan. In 2010, the best you're going to do in the house, and, and, and realistically, dream a little bit, pray a lot, you might, you're going to take out the speaker. And I hope she has to stay and sit there. Because I want to make sure she sees what's going to happen. I want it to unfold in front of her eyes. What you're going to do is, is you're going to take that house, and you might take the Senate, but you don't have veto power. So your job is, is to make sure that bills are brought from the people instead of down at you. Clear and concise to show where this administration stands all the way through and through. Your next move is 12. Okay? Then you can take this administration out. And then you can make a difference in the Senate and the House. What can you do in the meantime? District 1 has so many opportunities, okay? And I'll give you a couple examples. I'm a health care provider. I believe in health care. And it is what you eat. By the way, I'm allergic to wheat and gluten. Okay? So i got to watch what I eat and what I Personal accountability, personal responsibility. But I'm asking all of you to type the box. Guess what? In 2008, the Farm Bill gave us some exemptions to work with. It said states, 16 states, municipalities, or districts could establish their own food stamp program. That's a good help. To, make, to help people, to make them better, to do no harm. I should be talking about their health and what they're eating, right? Please tell me what's on the WIC diet. By the way, it's women, infants, and children that everybody should be on. Complex carbohydrates, okay? No simple sugars. Maybe I could get, say, you know, the fruit juices. But maybe I get a little bit of that. But here's the things that we want to get people back to accountability. Can you trade WIC dollars like you can um, food stamps? No. And guess what? Kids, my, my son is a junior in Sanawa High School. Guess what the number one class is in Sanawa High School? Cooking. My grandmother was the head cook for the French Marquis at the age of 14. My mom's a master chef. And I got kids, my son's friends. Five of them, four of them don't have moms. No one's cooked for them. Here's your sign, folks. How about we take out the food stamps and just use one? If I'm asking you to tighten that belt, show some fiscal responsibility, and it's in law. How about it? Well, guess what's in District 1? Citrus, fruits and vegetables, cattle, beef, chickens, water. You got it all. Let me ask you the next question. In the fourth quarter of a year, in the first quarter of the next year, something happens in Latin America. Can you feed yourselves in America? Absolutely not. Because we've retrained farmers not to grow stuff, not to do it only by what government wants them to do. That's the first thing you're going to do. We can grow capitalism through agriculture because we can do it just like the state. They took on immigration, they can also take it on here. The second part is energy. If you provide it, if you give some people hope, and you show them the way, it will come. Yeah. What was the field of dreams? If you build it, they will come? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. That's where we have to do it. Representatives, our forefathers, wanted representatives in the field. And that's where, if you go back to successful representatives, they were in the field more often than they were in Washington, D.C. And why? Because they started working with constituents. I told some of you before in the back, this is a magical time for Arizona. I want you to start believing and breathing and dreaming. 
because there's something good coming. You're going to get at least one more congressional delegate, delegate, probably two. How many times does that happen in the history of America? It doesn't. Hold the line, bring in reinforcements. Hold the line, bring in reinforcements, and then take it over. I'm a ground general. I'm also a dentist. The dentists are built on outcomes based. Where I want to go, and I'm going to backtrack. How am I going to get there? I probably will. You've got plenty of things to do in District 1. District 1 needs to come together and show the American people you can make a recovery. And you know how great that is? You're the 10th largest district in the country, and you're the second poorest. Take that. I love that kind of attitude. I'm going to watch that. So uh, the, the representative that's probably going to be uh, added to Arizona, is that going to be in Phoenix area? No. Pinal County. Most people believe Pinal County grew enough that that will go away. I actually think there will be a second one. And then you've got to go to historical significances, okay? I'm embarrassed to ask, how did District 1 become so large? Well, well, remember, example. District 1 used to be very large. It was like the entire state. <laughs> 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 Never mind, you don't have to answer. I don't really care, but it sure is interesting. But you bring, us, yeah. you bring up a good point because there is a commission for me. And we need good people to come to that commission that starts looking at it's based on population and based on voter percentages. So there's a lot of gerrymandering. So you need people to understand thinking, responsibility. Okay, that are willing to speak and not be afraid. That commission is occurring and getting ready to get set up for that's that's our district, the red. In our state's an independent. So it's uh, there is a state uh, there's a commission set up, it's an independent districting commission, redistricting commission. Correct. And that man who just stuck his head in the door, Hank Rogers, from Oklahoma County, he was considered. He wasn't wasn't accepted. But they're looking for independents who have no prior involvement with a political party, who are supposed to be able to you know to appraise it all and do it independently. There are they tried to make this district a totally rural district to, to try how that would work without having to spoke into the major metropolitan areas. The population. That's kind of how it evolved, and part of me got hacked off. In fact, I'm, I was a casualty. In 2002, I got taken out of the district, and we already had, had our place up in the globe, so I was able to keep back in. But it's a, it's a real problem. Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious. You guys are so much on the same line. Where do you guys differ? Remember, when you asked me this? He lives in Flagstaff. Who'd ever want to live there? <laughs> well, I mean. I like Rusty, and I think politics, and I, I, I first of all, I want to share a story with you, because I think this, this man needs to, to hear it. And I don't know, I don't care about your politics, but we shouldn't get violent. And that happened last Saturday. Who saved you? And there isn't some people that would do that. But we have to keep our civil, because this is politics, and it should be personal. So I look at things very similar to Rusty. However, I told you I'm outcomes based. I'm in Ann's back door. I can beat Ann in flights. <laughs> I've actually had three Democratic groups come talk to me. Why? I'm their doc. I've been their doc for 20 some years. And they were cornerstones of her candidacy. I'm about winning. I don't like losing. And it's nothing against for us. Don't get me wrong. Okay? There has to be differences. The difference is, is I don't have a legislative background. I am a small businessman. I am a small businessman. I know how to balance a paycheck. In fact, I'll tell you a little bit about dentistry. I pay my employees. My lowest paid employee makes $18 an hour. My highest makes over 40. How about try okay? My overhead is 71%. Dentistry averages between 60 for a very mature practice to 85% for a new dentist. You know what? Government needs to run like a business. If you ain't got it, stop the print. Stop the print. Cut down. Personal accountability. Business, business, business. You can't do that. And we've lost the respect for business at the Capitol. 